and welcome. I'm Eric Gao, and here's what happened this week. Former Taipei Mayor Ke Wenze has lost his appeal and is back in detention as part of an anti-corruption investigation. It's left his Taiwan People's Party in damage control mode. John Van Triest has the latest. Just days after his release, former Taipei Mayor Ke Wenze is handcuffed and led into a police van. As allegations of corruption during his time as mayor hang in the air, prosecutors convinced the court to reverse its decision to let Ke go for the time being. While this second arrest wasn't a total surprise, it has the party Ke founded, the Taiwan People's Party, in emergency mode. The head of the party's caucus had to cut short a radio interview after news broke and party leaders called an urgent meeting. The question at hand is whether Ke helped the owner of a shopping mall get planning permission to massively expand its floor space. Ke says he knew nothing about the matter, but prosecutors think there may have been a corrupt deal involving Ke and other city officials, and that the extra floor space earned the mall's owner around 625 million U.S. dollars in illicit extra profits. As Ke's party maintains Ke's innocence, the other two main parties say they'll leave it to the courts to decide. But Ke's fate could have big political consequences. This legislature is split three ways, with no majority. Though the smallest of the three, Ke's party, which centers on him, is therefore the decider. This scandal from years ago may just upset the political balance of power for years to come. Andy Xue and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. The de facto U.S. ambassador to Taiwan has spoken at his first press conference since taking on the position in July. Raymond Green says it's important for Taiwan to keep a strategic balance in Asia. Green says China is trying to change the regional status quo, targeting Taiwan and other countries. He's encouraging Taiwan and the U.S. to continue exchanges and to work to bolster security cooperation. Now, the U.S. and Taiwan do not have diplomatic relations, but Washington is Taipei's largest provider of military equipment and aid. China's first globally released AAA video game, Black Myth Wukong, is causing a stir here in Taiwan due to its delayed launch on one console. Some people say that's because of political pressure, but some gaming insiders say Taiwan should stop criticizing the game and learn from it. Irene Lin reports. <laughs> Striking enemies with the staff in a movement like lightning. This is Black Myth Wukong, China's first blockbuster video game with top tier graphics, voice acting, and sales. According to third party statistics, Black Myth surpassed 850 million US dollars in gross revenue just two weeks after its global release, more than 10 times its budget. The anthropomorphic monkey is inspired by the classic Chinese novel Journey to the West, focusing on the story of the monkey king Sun Wukong, one of the leads in the original novel. Gamers in Taiwan are among millions around the world giving the game positive reviews, putting aside the political divide between China and Taiwan. Here at the Guanghua Digital Plaza, a computer and electronics hub in Taipei, there's been an explosion of interest in buying the hardware needed to play a game like Wukong. The game's success shouldn't come as a surprise. While Taiwan and China are at odds on the world stage, when it comes to culture, the two shares a common heritage. And the Monkey King story is a big part of that. But it's left some wondering, why can't Taiwanese stories succeed in the same way? 
Taiwanese games have achieved some success, notably those from developer Red Candle. But while Black Myth is drawn from a centuries-old novel, these Taiwanese hits have often touched on the country's difficult history and politics. The 2019 game Devotion was removed from all major sales platforms after gamers found hidden messages mocking Chinese leader Xi Jinping. The legendary setting of Black Myth has by comparison given it a wide appeal. So when we pick a topic, we always want to uh, show the world what Taiwan is about. But to a Western audience, um, Chinese cultural background is a, is a lot more general and a lot more uh, familiar. But I think you need to draw people in before you can start trying to show them what you want to show them. And Black Myth Wukong does that. Black Myth developers have also tried to distance themselves from any controversial topics, even asking reviewers to steer clear of topics like communism, feminism, and COVID-19. And beyond the subject matter, few gamers in Taiwan are aiming for the kind of sales numbers Black Myth has reached. For that to change, a long-term vision is needed. Taiwan常常的心态不一样，它可能就是一开始锁定就是亚洲地区，所以如果我们真的是要有一个就是行销全球的话，就是当然政府的支持还有这个公司的决心，然后还有就是它整个在IP选择，然后或是原创议题上面
Patrick Chun and Chris Gorin for Taiwan Plus. Taipei has hosted the 2024 Content Asia Awards, an annual event that celebrates programs and movies made here in Asia. Leslie Nell was at the ceremony. 141 nominees among 27 categories look to take home awards, recognizing excellence in Asian entertainment at the Content Asia Awards here in Taipei. And it's a time for creators from around the continent to celebrate Asian content creation. Taiwan's content creators walked away with four silver awards, and it was a promising haul for Taiwan. The country has gained recognition over the years as a content creation contender. Several Taiwanese production companies were in the running for awards, including Taiwan Plus, but it was Taiwan's Hakka TV that had the most nominations going into the ceremony with four. Hakka isn't the main or we say the mainstream language or culture here in Taiwan, but um, we made a lot of efforts to promote both the culture and our language because without Hakka, Taiwan wouldn't be the same. So that's we think we may take some kind of opportunities like this to illustrate what makes Taiwan so different. Ceremony organizers lauded Taiwan's content creation at the awards. There's a pride in what you create and your own ideas and developing your own ideas. And I think that is a real superpower and not, uh, uh, layered on top of freedom of speech and democracy, gender equality. You said I'm very the Content Asia Awards have been held annually since 2020. The first editions were held virtually until last year when a physical ceremony debuted in Bangkok. Taipei is the second city to ever host the award ceremony. Everyone wants to come here. Look how many people came. Uh, they used the Content Asia Summit. They wanted an excuse to come. And now, so they came. Now they've seen it. With the fifth edition of the awards now over, Taiwan has staked its claim as a content hub in Asia. And with a diverse culture to draw from, the future of Taiwan's entertainment industry has the potential to grow even stronger. Alex Tun and Leslie Liao in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's school children are the most overweight in Asia. That's according to recent figures published by Taiwan's health ministry as they try to bring more public attention to the issue of childhood obesity. Reese Ayers reports. School children across Taiwan are facing a crisis of health and nutrition as the country's youth claim the undesirable title of the most overweight in Asia. It's a problem with serious medical consequences. <laughs> Despite a slight drop in rates compared to last year, figures from Taiwan's Health Promotion Administration show that a quarter of primary school students are overweight, a proportion that increases to 30% for students in junior high. It's a multifaceted issue, as medical professionals try to dispel the myth that children naturally grow out of their baby fat, while also driving home the importance of regular exercise. Health experts are also pointing to the fact that school lunches are often nutritionally imbalanced and are encouraging parents to try to do more food prep at home. But with an abundance of fast food restaurants and convenience stores selling cheap processed meals and after school snacks, temptation is on every street corner, making it difficult for children to make healthy choices. Ryan Wu and Reese Ayers in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Thanks for joining us today for Here's What Happened. Finally, we take you to a special event at Shanghai Museum featuring Egyptian antiquities and some feline friends. I'm Eric Gao. Take care and we'll see you next week.